All right, here are solutions for the polynomial factorization worksheet. Um, all right, well, the basic idea on these is what you're looking for is two numbers, and those two numbers will go right here and right here. And what you need is those two numbers to multiply to be this six in this case, whatever the constant term is. And those two numbers need to add together to be five. So in this case, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to be six, add to be five. Uh, those two numbers are two and three. So our factorization of this polynomial is x plus two times x plus three. Um, maybe this first one I will check. Check it here in blue, maybe. I don't think it's worth checking all of these, but if we wanted to check to make sure that we were right with this x plus 2 and x plus 3, we could just multiply those back together. And the way I taught you guys to multiply was kind of this box method here. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. x times 3 is 3x. And 3 times 2 is 6. And if you add up these four guys in here, what you get is x squared plus 2x plus 3x is 5x plus 6. And sure enough, that is what we started out with. So we factored it correctly. These I won't go quite that slower. We'll be here all day. But this time we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to positive 5. Um, I think what those two numbers end up being is, let's see, x plus 6 and x minus 1. Switch to red because that orange might be hard to see. Um, multiplies to negative 6, adds to positive 5. Over here, we need two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative 5. In that case, it'll be negative 2 and negative 3. Multiply those together, you get positive 6. Add them together, you get negative 5. All right, moving down to the second row. Now we want two numbers that multiply to give us 36 and add to give us 12. The only two that'll work there is 6 and 6. So in this case, it's x plus 6 times x plus 6. Or if you really wanted, you could call that x plus 6 squared. Um, over here, two numbers that multiply to 28 and add to negative 12. Um, as the numbers get bigger, they're a little bit harder to find. But I think we can figure that one out. No, maybe we can't. Let's see, 28 is 7 times 4 or 14 times 2. So I think this one does not work. Um, in this case, the polynomial's prime. I think you won't be able to find two numbers that multiply to 28 and add to negative 12. Um, so, I don't know, it's prime, you can't factor it, you're stuck right there. This one, we want two numbers. And so this one, you might think you could do it, right? You might you might be, think 14 and two would work somehow, but to make it positive 28, it would have to be negative 14 and negative two, and that doesn't add to negative 12. Anyways, over here we need, si multiply to 60, Add to negative 19. Uh, let's see, I think negative 15 and negative 4 will do the trick. So we got x minus 15 and x minus 4. All right, on to the next row. x squared minus 101x plus 100. So numbers that multiply to positive 100 add to negative 101. I think what those are are negative 1 and negative 100. Um, this gets a little bit trickier, this 195. Um, I don't know, for these last couple, I try to make them really hard just in case there's some whizzes that get through these really quick. Um, 195, it turns out that that is, so 195 is 39 times 5, and 39 is 3 times 13. So 195 is 3 times 5 times 13. And once you have this factorization here, it's a little bit easier to find two numbers that multiply to 195 and add to negative 2. Let's see, we could get negative 2 if we group these two and took it as negative 15 and positive 13. So I think our answer here will be x minus 15 and x plus 13. Um, this is way harder than I give you on a quiz or a test, just something in case... Um, people were really good at these and wanted some hard ones. I think here's one that's pretty damn hard. Um, maybe I'll s put a little line here. This one's pretty tricky too. 176. Well, let's see, that's even. So 176 is 2 times 
times something. Um, plug into my calculator, it tells me that's 88. Um, and 88 is 2, well, 8 times 11. And 8 is 2 times 4. And 4 is 2 times 2. So what that gives us is 176 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 11. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 11. Um, okay, so we need to kind of group these in a way so that we can get things to add up to positive 5. I think the way you can do that is taking all these 2's together, you get 16. So if we take positive 16 and negative 11, see I think those will multiply together to give us negative 176 and add together to give us positive 5. Again, these two, a little bit too hard, but just something to do while you're working these through in class. Okay, this next row is a little bit different. We don't have a leading coefficient of 1. Um, in this chapter, the later we'll learn how to factor these generally when the leading coefficient is not 1. But in this chapter, we don't know how, so we ha it has to be the case that we can factor out whatever the leading coefficient is. What I'm saying is all three of these terms are even. They all have, they have a greatest common factor of 2. So I can pull that out and get to here. And then I can factor this. I need two numbers that multiply to give me 50 and add to 15. I think 5 and 10 are those two numbers. So the factorization of this is actually this line down here. Same idea here, except now the greatest common factor is 100. So you pull out 100, you're left with x squared minus 1 minus 42, minus 1x, sorry, minus 42. Um, so leave this 100 alone and then try to factor this trinomial with the leading coefficient of 1. Two numbers that multiply to negative 42 and add to negative 1, I think you'll get negative 7 and positive 6. And then finally over here, let's see, these have a greatest common factor. Well, they all have 9 in common, but we can take out more than that. We can actually take out 9x to the 8th power. They all have 9x to the 8th in common. And if you pull that out, you get x squared plus 2x minus 3. And then you can say 9x to the 8th. Let's see, this thing here factors down to x. Two numbers that add to 2 and multiply to negative 3. x plus 3x minus 1. So here's the factorization. Finally, these last three, these are the ones where you got the x's and the y's in them. So the greatest common factor here is just 1. These guys have nothing in common. So what we're looking for is two numbers that multiply to... Everything except for the x in the middle term, or sorry, this constant term, they multiply to 12y squared, and they add to everything except for the x in the middle term, they add to 8y. So two numbers that add to 8y and multiply to 12y squared, see I think that's 6y and 2y, yeah that'll work, so x plus 6y times x plus 2y. If you add these two numbers, you get 8y. If you multiply them, you get 12y squared. Same idea here. Now we want to multiply to negative 21y squared. And we want to add to negative 4y. Um, so let's see. We'll have this same format here. Multiplying to negative 21, I think negative 7y and positive 3y will do the trick here. So that gives us negative 21y squared, and if you add them together, you get negative 4y. 